Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. So this is our first ever awards show, and we would like to start off by rewarding some of the dumbest things that happened this year. Also, John and I both watched The Office, so for those <laughs> of you who follow my Twitter, you already know that the name of this section of the show is The Dumdies. You were able to get video live from the White House. Oh, and for those of you listening to the podcast, that was a bunch of chimpanzees as we phones dressed in office wear. Yes. So uh, what's the first dumdy? As it is a dumdy, I would like to uh, give the award for the best impression of Dwight Schrute mm -hmm. from the office. For those of you not familiar with the office, there is one episode during which Dwight brings a gun to the office. <laughs> uh, here is a refresher for those not familiar. Dwight, no gun, okay? Don't make us call Joe. Someone get me a banana. Sorry, I freaked you guys out. <laughs> it's a real moment from the office, which mm -hmm. we can use because we're using it to compare something that is newsworthy <laughs> from the year and put it into context. So there we're you safe. go. Uh, and the best impression of Dwight from the office was done on March 1st by Jesse Randall Davidson, a teacher in Dalton, Georgia, um, who brought a gun to school and yes, it's true, a high school social studies teacher who fired a gun inside his Georgia classroom in February, hitting a window and alarming students and his staff. He was punished for uh -huh. that. And not only did he bring a gun to school and fire it in the room, he looks exactly like Dwight Schrute. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but wait, which one is Dwight Schrute? Dwight Schrute is on the right, Rain mm -hmm. Wilson, the actor grew a beard, which makes it actually quite the same. And the reason <laughs> this makes sense in the full context of the year in news is everyone's saying uh, when they're defending, uh, when they're proposing solutions to school shootings, they're saying, well, what if we arm the teachers? Yeah. This that, teacher was armed. And by the way, that was not the only teacher who fired a gun in school. There was another one, if you remember, shot the ceiling and shrapnel sprayed the students. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so there was actually competition in this category. Did he look as much like Dwight Schrute, John? More. It was Rain Wilson. No, it was not. Okay, <laughs> the good uh, first dumb D, what's our second? Um, the next award goes to, is the most fittingly named person award, or fittingly named friends award. And that goes to, yes, you guessed it, Brett Kavanaugh's friends, PJ, Tobin, and Squee. <laughs> because of course, he had friends named PJ, Tobin, and Squee. And Squee. Not one could have just a standard name. And the thing was, you had to hear those names over and over and over and over for weeks. And the best part about it is during the trial, or not the trial, during the hearing, he used those names to evoke some kind of like nostalgia, nostalgia and um, in, in using it that way, affection yeah. for these people and seriousness most of all. He also, before you move on, John, the bad choice was the sparkling water because I've been fighting back burps <laughs> since we started. Most likely to burp in 2019. Uh, he was using those names as if he was referencing like an early season of Stranger Things. Hey, you remember those kids in the adventures they used to get up to? No, but the thing is like I know what adventures PJ Tobin and Squee got up to. They were crimes. Yeah. They were crimes. Yeah, yeah. What is Squee short for? Did we ever find that out? <laughs> it turns out you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Anyway, what's up uh, next? Next up is the Don't Call It a Comeback Award. This is for a comeback so short lived that you literally just can't call it a comeback at a certain point. And that goes to Roseanne Barr. That was it. That was a pretty easy one, but she earned it. She really earned it. She earned it. Uh, for those of you not familiar with what happened in that situation, she tweeted out the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ. And the equals VJ refers to Valerie Jarrett. Yeah. Um, she then followed up with some pretty amazing defenses. And I think that's what really solidifies this as an extra special comeback that wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, first, she tried to say uh, why she referred to Valerie Jarrett as such. She said, Rod Serling wrote Planet of the Apes. It was about anti-Semitism. That is why my t what my tweet referred to, the anti-Semitism of the Iran deal. Low IQ people 
can think whatever they want. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? For, for, is, I'm actually impressed because I had not seen that part of her defense. Oh, right. Really? Um, what does that have to do with Valerie Jarrett? Because it's she not was Valerie just Jarrett, involved it's the in foreign policy. Like, it's the Planet of the Apes, apes aspect of it. Mm -hmm. She. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost as ridiculous as there. We do have a video for you of the well thought out other response that uh, was had to this situation. Take a look. I thought the bitch was white. God damn it! I thought the bitch was white. <laughs> Whew. Well, okay. The thing is, you can only have been doing one thing, making an allusion to the anti-Semitism of a piece of uniquely American literature, or you thought the bean was white. Only one of those two things can actually happen. Hey, look at that B-roll, nice. Anyway, yeah, very bad comeback. And the interesting thing is, we had, um, who's the home improvement guy? Uh, the home Tim improvement Allen. guy is Tim Allen. He had a comeback this year. He's a conservative guy, conservative show. He's not apparently as crazy, and so it's working for him. His show has you been on do for it. a number of years. But it was canceled. It was canceled it was from brought back. one network and brought to another. Yes. Good for him, really. Good for him, and, and not good for her. Not um, good for her at all. Not good for her. Okay. There is more to this saga. This is uh, the busiest body award. There are a lot of busy bodies out there, a lot to choose from. Uh, and these are people who really should have minded their own business, but rather took it upon themselves to uh, police folks based, it seemed largely on the color of their skin. We had a lot of nominees. There was Barbecue Becky. <laughs> there was Permit Patty. Mm -hmm. There was Pool Patrol Paul. These are people who uh, uh, I had a lot of trouble dis distinguishing who was better. <laughs> and the award goes to the one that kind of started it all, which was Barbecue Becky. Mm -hmm. Here it's is a, a refresher. There's a charcoal grill in the park here. No, it's not actually. I just yeah, looked at the it map. Is. It says this is a designated barbecue area. No, it, if you, it, not for a charcoal grill. No charcoal grills are allowed. She made that up. There's mm -hmm. no way she was like, char uh, I've checked the regulations, subsection D. Probably not. There's an amazing um, bunch of video on this mm -hmm. about the 911 call that came out afterwards. The the video made that kind of uh, summarizes the whole incident starts with Barbecue Becky crying, sobbing, mm -hmm. because she obviously is the victim here. But here's a little excerpt that I found. Uh, the 911 officer or dispatcher that responded, they, he goes, "What's the panic over a barbecue? I don't understand." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, and then follows up with, "So why are you in an argument with these people? Can you walk away? <laughs> are you free? Are they holding you down, ma'am?" The nine one one ex, the nine one one dispatcher is an expert on emergencies, <laughs> and and sees them all the time. So when they give you an answer like that, it's time to kind of yeah, exactly it's back um, from it. And honestly, I wonder if. If this is the worst, because look, she became a meme, you know, for this sort of activity. Uh, but also, all the other people who did it later, like they knew that this was out there, that we were we don't, we're not interested in this sort of busybody behavior anymore. But they still did it. But I, I do want to give her at least a little bit of credit. She helped to make clear to people that this sort of stuff has been going on forever, and she finally made it very obvious, very in people's face. So hopefully, we can try to address it as a society. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the runner-up permit patty was hilarious. She had to resign afterwards be, uh, as the CEO of a cannabis products company, mm -hmm. which means she probably should have been more chill about this. Situation. Probably, I, I think a good runner-up would be the woman who called 911 on a whale. <laughs> That's right. As we continue with the dumdies. And it's the perfect intro for the next three awards, actually. And they are all Trump-based awards. The first one he actually sent in to us himself. Really? It is the award for the biggest traitor, <laughs> Trump's biggest traitor. And there's a lot to choose from in mm -hmm. this respect. So I was excited. Oh, it's autocorrect. <laughs> Turns out it's just autocorrect. It's autocorrect. Huh. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I feel, I feel like he could have used autocorrect. On that one. Trying to figure out, and his penmanship is impeccable, it's, by the way. Yeah, it's better than his signature, I'll give him that. My God, it's so weird that it casts a shadow. I made that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> way to sell oh, yourself no, up sent, forever, Brett. He sent it in. He sent it in himself. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that was it. For those of you not familiar with his autocorrect fiascos from the year, uh, there is 
the, the smoking gun that really <laughs> is still smoking away. Mm -hmm. He sent a tweet, Democrats can't find a smoking gun tying to the Trump campaign to Russia after James Comey's testimony. No smoking gun, no collusion. <laughs> he said it twice. Yeah. And uh, look, the thing is that what's so insidious about the autocorrect is it, it just keeps shadowing him. So with Scott Free, he was just trying to say someone got off Scott Free, but now we're looking for Mr. Free. <laughs> okay, it's an issue that comes up time and again. It wasn't just that, because someone also, when he said Scott Free with two T's, someone mm -hmm. photoshopped uh, some Scott tissue mm -hmm. on the <laughs> image of him throwing like paper products at Hurricane Maria, Maria survivors. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's, it's, it's not just what it corrects, it's also when it lets our president down. Let's not forget when he needed autocorrect most with the Kofefe incident. Yep. And, and where was autocorrect then? It's been Traitor. a year and a half since Kofefe, mm -hmm. and just as it, we were starting to forget it. Yeah. And, and we got still, the smocking gun. We don't know what he meant. Um, okay, and that brings us really to Trump's tweet that he actually meant of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to choose from. He tweets all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any favorite tweets from throughout the year, John? I mean, lately, the past month or so, Smocking Gun was pretty good. I mean, I remember the one that ended with, do something! <laughs> Which is always, like, if you want to express that you're in control, grounded, do something! <laughs> That's this, probably gonna be one of my favorite for the rest of my life. This one is actually quite similar to the <laughs> all caps do something. It's a little more simplistic if you can fathom that. It is treason, question mark, <laughs> all caps. That is a loud question. <laughs> you don't often see the all caps question <laughs> without the exclamation point, which I'm a fan of. The best part is, you know, like this is pretty much sums up most of his tweets throughout the year. <laughs> it does. Treason? It was about some New York Times op-ed that got written. It was the mole, right? Yes, it so was. There was the mole from inside the White House. And he called it treason, but mm -hmm. really with every single person that he has encountered this year, he has wanted to call treason. Exactly, and what I loved about that was, look, he was mad that there was someone, you know, mole inside the White House. I understand that, lots of people would. It's probably not treason to talk to the New York Times. But even so, he tweeted out the perfect thing for people who despise his presidency to just respond with yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be going back to that tweet probably sometime in the next few months. And the final Trump uh, affiliated dumb D of the year. It is um, the most 2018 moment of 2018. Mm -hmm. This uh, much like that tweet summarized all Trump's tweets into one. There is one moment that really stands out for all of us. Uh, that really summarizes every terrible thing that happened in 21. Take a look. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on, or what I need the liberals to improve on is, if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories, and we have to make our core be in power. We have I love this guy right here. Let me get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> That was the White House meeting that we deserve as a people. It's so amazing, because not only that, he's like, it's called the Yeezy effect. It was, a, it was part of a meeting that had a manic episode, really, from Kanye. Mm -hmm. It then triggered all these moments where people on the right, all these media darlings from the right started sidling up to, to Kanye. Briefly. And then instantly, they were, he was like, I, uh, I think my message has been co-opted by the evil organization. Yeah, and he, he was not wrong, yeah. he was not wrong. But yeah, that's, that meeting, I mean, it was, it was peak 2018. And the interesting thing is we might in a few years have something that's peak uh, 2021 when you have that same meeting but they're sitting on opposite sides of the desk. Oh God, God mm. help us. Mm, it could happen. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.